the dinosaur fossil known as Hadrosaurus fulci is so historically important that its image is built into the State House complex in Trenton, New Jersey. The State Capitol's ornate stained glass window features the creature as well as the farm in Haddonfield, New Jersey, where its bones were discovered in 1858. Today, that heavily wooded discovery site in Camden County is a National Historic Landmark and a place where a collective fascination with dinosaurs really began. The town of Haddonfield celebrates Hadrosaurus fulci with a massive bronze sculpture in the center of its business district. And across the Delaware River at the Philadelphia Academy of Natural Sciences, enthusiastic crowds continue to visit the history-making skeleton 140 years after it was first mounted for public display here. The Academy, America's oldest natural sciences museum, has long considered Hadrosaurus fulci one of its core treasures. But why is this particular creature so important to the Academy as well as to the history of dinosaur discovery in general? We ask paleontologist Dr. Ted Dashler. He's the chairman of the Academy's Department of Vertebrate Zoology. Hadrosaurus fulci was an animal that had profound impacts on our understanding of dinosaurs. When it was discovered in 1858, it was the most complete skeleton of a dinosaur that had ever been found in the history of the world. So for the first time, we were able to see how a dinosaur skeleton could be put together fully, what the proportions of the body were, and reconstruct the animal into a reasonable reconstruction of how the animal actually looked in life. And then imagine it with skin and color and as a living animal instead of just a skeleton. It did finally give people the ability to imagine what a dinosaur actually looked like. Although the fossils that were found earlier were proof of dinosaurs, these large prehistoric reptiles, they didn't quite allow people to relate to them as living animals because the bits and pieces that were found were isolated bones or isolated teeth and the whole animal really could not be easily imagined. But when Hadrosaurus fulci was discovered, finally, and then reassembled, I should say, so the discovery came in 1858, the mount of the skeleton of Hadrosaurus fulci was put on display in 1868, and that's finally when the public was able, for the first time, to see a complete dinosaur skeleton and sort of awaken that imagination in people about the size, the scale, and the way the dinosaurs lived. When Hadrosaurus fulci was displayed here at the Academy, it was a phenomenon. The attendance of the Academy skyrocketed far beyond anything that it had previously experienced. And it was a little bit of a problem handling all those crowds. And so, in that sense, Hadrosaurus fulci really did change the history of the Academy of Natural Sciences and for the first time introduced this mass audience to the science to the exhibitions that the Academy was doing. If we go back in time 80 million years and we go to the geographic area that is now southern New Jersey, it was a shallow ocean or lagoons close to the shore. The marl that I speak of, also called green sand, is the organic rich sediment that slowly but surely built up and because it was so organic rich, in the 1800s, farmers learned that if you dug it up and spread it out on your fields, it was a good fertilizer. So that's what happened. In the 1800s, people were digging marl pits, digging into this organic, muddy, sandy, soft rock and spreading it out on their fields. And by digging down into that soft rock, they were exposing the bones of animals that had died and been buried in that soft rock 80 million years earlier. So that's how fossils like Hadrosaurus fulci and many, many other sorts of fossils, sharks teeth, mosasaur teeth, crocodile skeletons, that's how those were discovered and then brought many of them to museums or other institutions where they were studied and that's how we've learned so much about ancient New Jersey. One of the really neat aspects of Hadrosaurus fulci and, it, and its place in history is that it's a, a great example of minds coming together, of, his, of the right people being in the right place at the right time. So 
It seems that back in the early to mid 1800s, bones like the Hadrosaurus falci bones were actually found in Haddonfield by people working in these marl pits maybe even parts of the skeleton of Hadrosaurus falci, but no one really was there to say these might be important. These may have an interest to the anatomists over in Philadelphia, so let's, let's show them these things. Instead, fossil bones were treated as curiosities and items to kind of look at and ponder and then put on the shelf. But in 1858, as coincidence would have it, William Parker Falk was vacationing in Haddonfield and learned about some of these discoveries on Hopkins Farm and went there and asked questions and started an excavation at the site where some of these bones had been found 20 years earlier. So Falk was finally someone who sort of had the wherewithal to say these might be important. And then Falk also had connections with Dr. Joseph Leidy here at the Academy probably the only person in North America at the time who was able to receive them and understand what they were and their scientific value. So that was just the right people at the right time at the right place. And you can add another layer onto that. Ten years later, Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins learned of these wonderful skeletal materials of a dinosaur that had come out of Haddonfield. And Waterhouse Hawkins was in New York and came down to Philadelphia. He had the knowledge about how to create these huge sculptures. And so naturally, he was the right person to work with Joseph Leidy, who was the right person to understand the anatomy. And so those two, that collaboration, resulted in the first dinosaur skeleton mounted and put on display in 1868. And it was the first one in the entire world and it was a coming together of great minds in the right place at the right time. For more information about Hadrosaurus Fulci, see the Academy's website at www.ansp.org. For the full illustrated story of Hadrosaurus Fulci, see NewJerseyDinosaur.com. And to see more of Haddonfield's famed bronze sculpture of the creature, go to Hadrosaurus.com.